Hey guys, Greg Chaplin here, physical therapist and strength and conditioning specialist. And in this video, we're going to talk all about rib flare and specifically how all rib flare is not created equally. I'm going to go over three distinct subtypes of rib flare that I see and how they're different as well as some exercise examples that you could use to address them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So obviously rib flare is a massively popular topic right now. Of the videos that I've posted, my rib flare video is by far and away my most popular video. And if you're watching this and you're not sure what rib flare is, you can go ahead and watch that video or just keep watching this one. And if you're wondering if you should address rib flare or not, you can then go and watch this other video and I'll link that one as well. But if you've got rib flare and you're sure that you want to address it, one of the problems you might run into is that you hear these descriptions of rib flare that are just kind of like blanket statements across the board that describe them in these really simplistic ways, but then you go to do the exercises and they don't work or they seem like they might be counterintuitive or counterproductive depending on what you have. And in many cases, this is true because a lot of these recommendations from these people that are putting out this content is really meant to be a more general guideline. And it might be speaking to this first subtype that we're going to go over here, but not really addressing this second or third subtype. So let's go ahead. We'll start with the least severe subtype here with number one. Then we're going to go through number two and number three, and we'll go through some exercise examples as well. So generally speaking, rib flare here is going to be an outward appearance of the ribs. So this could be as simple as just a wide lower rib cage. Uh, what you're usually going to see here in the first subtype is that we have a pushing forward here at the lower rib cage that then causes these ribs to come out. So you could even do this by yourself by just standing up and then arching your back and you'll see your lower rib cage kind of open up out to the side. And that is a rib flare that is mainly caused by position, but not an actual shape change as much within the rib cage. So in this case, we have this forward push of the lower rib cage, tipping back of the upper rib cage, and then a widening of this angle here at the bottom. In this case, we have an inhaled position of the rib cage. We have an extended position of the spine. So all that we have to do to counteract this is just expand this lower part of the rib cage, get back in space a little bit, and then drive a little bit of exhalation here, and we can usually reduce that rib flare. So in this case, there's not as much shape change in the rib cage, so it's not as important to emphasize the breathing piece of this. Instead, it's more just positional. And then once we have that position where we're a little bit more balanced with the rib cage stacking over pelvis, and we can drive some dynamic movement in through the limbs with your kind of normal gym activities. And then from there, you should be totally fine. Once you've reacquired those options, you should no longer have that consistent appearance of a rib flare. To perform this activity, you'll lay on your back with your feet flat on the floor. You'll hold a weight over your shoulders. And to begin here, you'll do a nice easy breath in through the nose. Then exhaling as you push the weight away from you, allowing the shoulder blades to wrap around the rib cage. And you want to reach as far as you can until you feel the lower part of the rib cage start to secure itself down towards the ground or the bench or whatever you're on. And then from here, you want to take a nice easy breath in through the nose as you allow the weight to travel backwards. And as you do this, you're going to prevent the rib cage from tipping backwards. And you're only going to go as far as you can before that happens. So nice easy breath in, reaching back and away with the weight, keeping the lower rib cage down, then exhale to return. Then you can increase the range of motion gradually over time. Once again, with the determining factor being the ability to maintain the lower rib cage down against the support surface. Inhale back. Exhale, return. Inhale back, reaching up and back. And then exhale to return. Okay, so now moving on to subtype number two, this is a little bit different. And this is where we're going to have that position from that first type of rib flare, but then we're gonna have an activity of the diaphragm that actually causes a shape change within the rib cage. Now, in this case, we're gonna see an indentation starting to form here in the ribs just above the lower part. And then that lower part is gonna kind of stick out like this. And this is a bit more obvious. So if you see someone with like a t-shirt on or with their shirt off, you'll actually see this part of the rib cage kind of pointing out like this. And it's a lot more obvious. Now, under these circumstances, what we have is we have a diaphragm that's really, really tense and contracted. 
And what it's doing is it's pulling down so low that it's actually starting to pull the ribs inward like this. And then this lower part here kind of sticks out. So it is an inhaled position of the rib cage once again, but we're so inhaled that the diaphragm is now starting to act dyssynchronously and it's actually pulling in on those ribs because it's so tight rather than causing expansion in the rib cage that's a little bit more uniform so in this case the key to working on this is actually being able to drive some exhalation that's really nice and gentle and getting that diaphragm to be able to relax now under these circumstances inverted activities are particularly useful because we can use gravity to move the guts down into the diaphragm allowing that diaphragm to relax up a little bit and then from there, we can do nice easy breaths in where we don't over contract that diaphragm. We can do nice easy long breaths out where we really allow gravity to help us to relax that diaphragm. And then we can work on that skill. That is often going to reduce this pulling in activity of the diaphragm. Then we can go to progress to stage one again, use those same exercises with this breathing technique. And when we combine those two, usually we can reduce that appearance of the indent here as well as that rib flare that is just below it. To perform this activity, you'll elevate your knees and then drop down onto your elbows, supporting your head on your hands. You'll then walk your elbows in so you're as vertical as you can be. Then from this position, you'll perform gentle breaths in through the nose, pausing briefly at the end of your inhale, and then exhaling long and gentle through an open, relaxed mouth, making a sighing sound. And then once again, pausing at the end of your exhale, and then repeating this sequence. Gentle inhales quietly through the nose, feeling expansion in the rib cage, pausing briefly, exhaling long and gentle through an open relaxed mouth, and then once again, pausing at the end. Okay, and now moving on to subtype number three, this is gonna be where we have rib flare with comorbid pectus excavatum. And if you don't know what pectus excavatum is, it's where we have this little indentation of the sternum coming down like this. So we've got not only the rib flare down here like this, but we also have this indentation of this front side of the rib cage where we almost have a little bit of a cavity forming here. And this can range from mild to severe. If you're someone who's experiencing more of a mild pectus excavatum, what I'm about to say will probably work okay for you. But if you're someone where it's more severe, then I'd say don't even try to do this on your own. Go and get some in-person help. You might need some help from manual therapy or you might actually have to consult with other medical professionals so don't just be doing this exercise willy-nilly if you know you have a severe case of pectus excavatum all right so if you have this pectus excavatum and this rib flare we have a shape change within the rib cage that's actually going to look a little bit more like this right so we've got that push here usually at the lower posterior aspect of the rib cage then we also have a bit of compression here on this front side of the rib cage as well so you'll see we're wider side to side and those ribs flare out and we are more narrow front to back so because we have this shape change we need to create an exercise situation where we can actually reverse that so that we get anterior to posterior expansion and we get lateral compression here and so the best way to do this is going to be to get into a sideline position if we go sideline and we were here and we use gravity to our advantage and some breathing we can then open this up like this and we can change that shape a little bit now we can make this even more effective by putting some sort of a physical object below the lower side of that rib cage this could be the ground or this could be a foam roller and that's going to push up a little bit as we allow the body weight to settle down that's going to assist us in making that change now with this we also have to use that nice gentle breathing strategy that we talked about in that second type of rib flare we're going to combine that with the position here and we can then progress into inverted activities once we have a little bit of an ability to compress laterally and expand front to back and then from there once we have that we can then progress all the way back to the exercises that we talked about in that first subtype of rib flare and then we can use that to start to integrate dynamic movement into this new shape and position to perform this activity you'll start in a side lying position with a foam roller underneath your rib cage and a kettlebell in the opposite hand with the arm position straight above the shoulder the bottom leg will be straight and the top leg will be bent over the top of the bottom leg the foot of the top leg will be flat on the floor and the outer heel of the bottom leg will be pressing into the floor throughout the entire activity and take a breath in through your nose as you turn the kettlebell into an open position then you'll exhale as you turn the kettlebell back to a more closed position allowing the foam roller to compress the rib cage from this position of compression 
You'll repeat the same cues, turning into an open position as you take a gentle breath in through the nose. And then exhale as you close the top hand and allow the foam roller to compress the rib cage. So then repeat that sequence for a number of breaths. All right, so there you have it. We have three subtypes of rib flare and we have varying degrees of rib cage shape change associated with them as well as positional change. We need to know what subtype we're dealing with to then be able to select our exercises appropriately. If you're on that more severe end of the spectrum, you wanna work with that shape change in the breathing first and then progress back to those same exercises that will work for that first subtype. All right, so that does it for this video. If you need help working on the breathing piece of this, go down and get the Breathwork Breakthrough 7-Day Challenge at the link in my description. And until next time, thanks a lot for watching. Peace.